In this video, we're looking at summation notation, which comes up often in statistical formulas. So let's look at these two examples here, starting with example 16. They've given us some data values. We're going to call these x values. That's kind of the generic way to refer to data values here, is just to say they're x values. And we have three summations we're supposed to find, or some three summation related items we're supposed to find. And I've rewritten them here so we can see them a little better. The first one, we should break down so that we understand essentially what they're asking us to do here. The summation symbol is this Greek letter sigma, and it means to add. So basically when we see that in this early part of statistics, we're going to think of it as meaning to add. And so they're telling us to add these things. Now these things are the x values, so they're using x to represent these generic data points. So they're saying, hey, add up all the x values from, and this little i subscript here is an index, and it's telling us where to start and where to end. So it says start from the first value. That one doesn't stand for the number one, it stands for the first x value, and continue to add until you get to the fifth x value. The fifth x value in our case would be the last x value because we have a total of five x values. So this is saying basically, hey, add up all the x values from the first until the fifth. So let's go ahead and do that and see what we get. I'd have to add two to four, right? To negative three, to seven, to one. All right, very quickly, two plus four, of course, is six. Minus three is three. Three plus seven is 10. Plus one equals 11. All right, so that's the first summation done. So the first answer we get is 11. All right, let's look at the next one. The next one has parentheses. It has exponents. And of course, it has the summation symbol. So to interpret this one, we have to think of order of operations. So in order of operations, we learn that parentheses come first and then we would apply exponents. So first you would perform what's in the parentheses before applying the exponents, since parentheses have priority over exponents. So when you're applying the parentheses, it means you're supposed to do what's inside the parentheses first. But if we just focus what's inside the parentheses, it's really the same as what we did above, right? They're saying to add up the x values from the first to the fifth. So it's really what we've already done above, so the answer is 11 for what's inside the parentheses. So since that's inside parentheses, we would have 11 in parentheses, and then they'd have a square there. So they want us to square 11, and of course, if you do that, you get 121, or 11 times 11. All right, now, let's look at this next um, summation notation. It says that we have xi squared, and they want us to add those up from the first to the fifth one. So if we think about order of operations, what goes first? Is it the addition that the summation symbol is indicating, or is it the squaring that goes first? Well, in order of operations, exponents happen before addition. So this is saying we have to actually square all the x values from the first value to the fifth value, and only after doing that do we add them all together. So that means we're going to have 2 squared and 4 squared and negative 3 squared and 7 squared and 1 squared. And once we have all of them squared, we're going to add them up. So we're going to do the squaring first. That would give you 4 and 16 and 9 and 49 and 1. And then we're going to add them together. And that will be our final answer for this. So this and this make 20, and that 50, so that's 70, and then 9. So the answer turns out to be 79. So that's our solution for the last one. So three different answers using three different summation notation symbols. All right, now for the next example, for 16.5, what we have to actually do is to decipher this more complicated summation expression. So when you look at it, you say, well, geez, order of operation has to apply here, right? So I'm going to write it a little bigger in case you're having a hard time seeing what that says. It actually says the summation from 1 to 5 of parentheses x sub i minus 3 squared. This is what they're asking us to work out. Well, when I look at that, I say, okay, well, I have parentheses, right? And parentheses go first before exponents and before addition. So I need to apply what's inside the parentheses or do what's inside the parentheses first. Well, if you look at this, this is saying, hey, take the x values and subtract off three. Which x values? Well, from i equals one to five, or in other words, all the x values from the first to the fifth x value. Well, we have 
five x values here, so we're going to do that then. We're going to subtract off three from each x value first. So let's do that quickly. If I did negative one minus three, I actually get negative four, right? Because minus one minus three coming together make negative four. If I have five, right, this five, take away three, I get two. If I have nine take away three, I get six. And if I have six take away three, I get three. And if I have zero take away three, I get negative three. All right, so those are the values I get when I initially subtract three from each of them. But then after doing the subtraction, I should square before I add. So I better square each of these values as well, right? So each value will get squared. And only after squaring them will I go ahead then and finish by adding them all up, right? So if I square negative 4, I will get positive 16. Remember, a negative number squared becomes positive. 2 squared will give me 4. 6 squared will give me 36. 3 squared will give me 9. And negative 3 squared will also give me 9. And now that I've squared every value, I'm finally free to go ahead and add them together. And if I go to add them, 16 and 4 make 20. And then we have 36, and then we have 18, right? So we end up having uh, 38 plus 36, right? I added the 18 and the 20, 38 and 36. And that'll give you 74 when all is said and done. So 74 is our final answer for this sum, right? Because 30 and 30 make 60 and 8 and 6 make 14, so 74 is your total sum. So that's the answer for the final ones. This is pretty complicated, I guess, and there are a lot of people who, when encountered this for the first time on an exam, they will mess it up. They will end up doing something out of order. Just remember to follow order of operations. Use the parentheses first. That says subtract 3 from every value in your list. Then you square next, and only after squaring everything do we go ahead and add them up.